Hey everyone, welcome back to the RP Games YouTube channel. My name is Ralph, this is Pathfinder Kingmaker. Normally I do this at the end of the video, but please, if you're enjoying the content, hit the like button, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. It really helps out with the algorithm and I would really appreciate if you do. We're in the Kingdom Management screen. Uh, there is not a lot going on, but I did notice something on the way back in our previous episode. Something that uh, escaped my attention before. So let me point that out for you. So when I was returning from Candlemere, I saw that there was an exclamation mark here on the Swamp Witch's Hut. And apparently there is this uh, unicorn's horn, which I need for Arlene, uh, that's located here. I had no idea, just noticed it, and let's, let's head over to the Swamp Witch's Hut and see if we can find this unicorn's horn. <laughs> and of course, in the middle of that, we get the message, get to the bald hilltop, because shit is hitting the fan over there. So let's, uh, let's head over to bald hilltop first and uh, uh, kill some monsters. What? What is this, actually? An immense Mondragora. I have no idea what that is supposed to mean. I just know that it's gonna die. Damn, these uh, creatures are getting bigger and bigger every time. Left yourself open. Your life, flee. What are we? Uh, oh, okay. That was a trip attack there. All right. Uh, well, we, uh, we killed them. And there is nothing to loot from these bodies. It's this, oh, no, there is. Oh, oh, oh. Marquise Dazzle Light. A, uh, diamond. Yep, I'll take that. Thank you very much. Okay, on the way to the Swamp Witch's Hut... Apparently there is another new event going on called Creeping Dead. The magic forest keeps growing, coating entire villages and swallowing fields. Military minus 5, stability minus 5 and espionage minus 5. Great, so that's another event that we need to take care of probably. Uh, we're gonna check out for this uh, uh, unicorn's horn first though, while we're at the Swamp Witch's Hut. So let's start by checking with the old bell dame, who perhaps might have a unicorn's horn somewhere, I don't know. Well, there is no unicorn horn here. Okay, so that means that we're gonna need to look around a little bit. Maybe this horn is already... Maybe I picked it up already like a long time ago and then already sold it to a merchant somewhere in the kingdom. Wouldn't be surprised if that is what happened. I've had this before where there was a... where there was an exclamation mark on an area and then the way to solve the quest was not in that area, so that's a bit confusing of course. Uh, we got a gift from Dragon. Let's ask him to make something special. Let's check out what this uh, creeping dead is. And uh, <laughs> we've reached a worried status, that's not good. 
So, Valerie's representatives failed to reassure the people that their idea was absurd. The peasants only concluded that the regent was conspiring with the traitors. They are ready to take up arms and seize the palace. The guards continued to arresting uh, the misguided rebels, but their number grow by the day. Community, loyalty and stability minus two. We do have a faster rank up, so that is great. And what is this creeping dead stuff? Before the first of Desnes. Oh, okay. Well, that's um, quite soon, I guess. Impassable thickets full of poisonous plants and dangerous creatures have sprung up overnight and rooted themselves even in the streets of local villages. Countless subjects have already fallen victim to giant fly traps and other monsters which have emerged from the magical woods. This insanity from the bald hilltop must be stopped. Oh crap. Uh, when are they back? Rigongar and Jaital? Oh no, they're, they're not back soon enough. Uh, who was the best for this? Ikundayo. When is Ikundayo back? Nine days. Man. Yeah, that sucks. So that means that we're gonna take uh, a good penalty. We get uh, Tristian back, but uh, yeah, that's not gonna help us very much. Uh, what I'm wondering though is the rank ups, are they now like uh, seven day? Ah yes they are, they are seven days. Okay that's great. That is great. Um, I Yeah, I mean unless we have one of these fail. Yeah, actually the success chance is 5%. Um, I could just as well cancel this one and then have Jatel solve the issue. Uh, yeah, we're just gonna do that. Let's cancel that event. It gives us some minus. That's fine. Let's put Jatel on here. Oh, there is a 0% success chance. <laughs> okay, well, yeah, that uh, that did a lot. Um, great. We're, uh, we're doing well, people. So at least Tristian succeeded. A reasonable changes in legislation made it possible not only to close the loophole, but also to replenish all the losses in the treasury. Loyalty plus three. And then... Uh, oh, okay. The kingdom managed to persevere and enjoys peace once again. Oh, okay. So we did succeed. Okay, that's good. Military plus one, stability plus one, and espionage plus four. Espionage is at... 84 already great so what do i want to do now i could send jtol to deal with the arsonists it's again a really low chance to succeed um let's just do that and then uh, we are gonna start ranking up Whoever is available, I would say. So our regent was available. Counselor is available. The warden is not. The storyteller is available. Uh, yeah, let's just start in the beginning, I would say, with uh, our regent community to rank 6. That would be good, I guess. 7 days.
Community reached rank 6. So that means we're gonna get a plus 12 on... Uh, on uh, rolls. So another disaster. The runaway slaves nearly confided in the messengers of the king, but at the last moment they suspected a betrayal. They attacked the escort and killed everyone, then fled into the morning mist. Military minus 2, relations minus 3, and stability minus 1. That went uh, splendid. There is news for the king concerning another river kingdom. I guess that's uh, Patex. Lindsay has urgent correspondence for the king. The highest ranking priest of Avadar in the kingdom has passed away. Now the clergy must elect a new leader. If any of the candidates should win, thanks to the king's support, their gratitude would be immeasurable. And uh, our treasurer is available for that. So let's, uh, let's have Jubilus take care of that. And then the region wants to talk to me in the throne room. All right. Gonna have a bunch of stuff happening now after the um, kind of disappointing period at the uh, Swamp Witches hut there. I have news. Take a look. Aravedi, King of Patek, sent you an invitation to the Rushlight Tournament. We're not going to miss it, right? We're, you're taking me, of course. All of High Society of Pateks will be there, including people from the Academy, maybe even Headmaster Atalia Gitarin. I'd love to see her face when she hears about the book Professor Eobald is writing with me. What is this tournament? Aravedi holds it once in several years. Guests come from all the nearby kingdoms, Mivon, Gralton, Bravoy. Haven't been there personally, but I hear it's always a lot of fun. If Eravetti holds it once in several years, why did he wait until now to invite me? How would I know what goes on in Eravetti's head? Maybe he just thought you weren't important enough as a baron, but now you're a bona fide king. His equal, you could say. There's no reason not to invite you to what he considers the major social event of the year. Are you sure this isn't a trap? Well, it's certainly possible. There's definitely some catch here. This is Zerovetti we're talking about, after all. But I doubt he tried to kill you at his own festival, which business partners, uh, with business partners from all his neighbors present. He's more likely to try to sell you on some fraudulent deal or another. So keep your eyes and ears open and don't sign anything. What can you tell me of Patax and its king? Well, imagine a roadhouse full of pirates, mercenaries, smugglers, spies and other gentlemen of fortune. They're drinking to their successes, talking business, buying, selling, hiring, choking, burying. Now take this roadhouse and imagine it's the size of a kingdom. That was Pitex before Iravetti. Now imagine some unknown bard enters the roadhouse, pulls off a few shady deals and suddenly became the owner. Everything is the same as it was, but now the walls are covered with portraits of the owner. A brass band plays music every night, a juggler with a pet bear walks around in the room, gnome snipper strippers dance on the tables, barmen sell a variety of racy substances from Numeria beyond its beer. That's Patax now. Uh, well, let's... Um, I think Gren heard gnome strippers and, and was like, yeah, we're going. Interesting. Well, if I have the time, why not? Great. Trevor, no, it'll at least be a ton of fun. You will take me with you, right? Pretty please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, what is this visitor? Oh, it's... Like, couldn't you just tell me a second ago? Congratulations, Grand Blackforge. It looks like your subject's efforts weren't wasted after all. The Black Marquis and his pirates that were prowling around here won't be attacking the kingdom. At least that's one problem of our hands. 
Okay. I'd like to ask you for advice, Grand Blackforge. Two clans from the swamps are arguing over a meadow. Solid fertile ground is very valuable in the marshes, especially when you have so many mouths to feed. The clan elders decided to determine the owner by a long-standing tradition. Here is the essence of it. Ten armed men from each clan will face each other in a meadow. The first clan lose to lose all of its fighters relinquishes its claim to the land. It's a cruel tradition, but they've been following it for many generations. Even if we prohibit the tradition, it'll only make them angrier and they'll seek to settle their scores by other means. Their way of life shouldn't be disturbed. Let them fight according to their tradition. Trying to cancel a centuries-old tradition by a decree would be like trying to empty their swamp with a bucket. It'll take many years before they've prepared to change their ways. Okay, well... Iravetti, King of Pitax, invited our King to a tournament. But why? A demonstration of neighborly amiability, perhaps? Unlikely. The ruler of Pitax was renowned for his devious guile. So uh, check the title of this chapter, War of the River Kings. So I'm guessing I'm going to war with Pitax, which I already alluded to in the previous episode. Oh boy. Let's see if there is a time limit to this. The Rushlight Tournament. Tournament will take place in Patex. Uh, let us hurry. I heard they're serving especially delicious wines this year. No mention of the gnome strippers, huh? Okay. Okay. So we did all these. That's fine. What is this? Protectors of the land provides one morale bonus to armor class and saving throws while fighting in claimed regions. Okay, Valerie could take care of that one. We can uh, rank up the region once more. And then there is the Rushlight Tournament. It's time to visit the Pataxians and participate in their challenges. Okay, so we kind of have to go there. All right, so that is something we're going to do in a next episode. This might be a bit shorter due to the um, unfortunate events at the Swamp, the swamp Witch's Hut. Um, but we're starting a new chapter and I would like to do that in a new episode. So thanks a lot for watching. If you're enjoying the content, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, and I will see you at the Rushlight Tournament in the next episode.